lesson three that is in floating and sinking and today we are going to look at relative density we start with the definition we have that it is defined as the ratio of the mass of a substance to the mass of equal volume of water also we can define it as the density of a substance to the density of water remember we are talking of the ratio and the ratio has no units because the units will cancel out so mathematically we have that relative density is equals to the density of a substance divided by the density of water or weight of a substance divided by the weight of equal volume of water as well we can say that it is the mass of a substance divided by the mass of equal volume of water remember we are referring to equal volumes now we move to the relative density of a solid now when we want to get the relative density of a solid we consider the equal volumes of that solid and water therefore if the volumes are equal then we can say that the relative density is the mass of a solid divided by the mass of equal volume of water but we know that mass is directly proportional to the weight therefore we can say that relative density is equal to the weight of a solid divided by the weight of equal volume of water but when we come to the weight of equal volume of water that will be the weight of displaced water is the weight that is displaced by the the solid and this weight of a displaced water is the same as the up thrust so our equation is reduced to relative density is equals to the weight of a solid divided by the up thrust in water then we move to relative density of solid which sinks in water in this case we get the weight of a substance in air as w1 then we get the same weight of a substance but now when it is immersed in water as w2 and remember we are dealing with equal volumes that is we have equal volume of substance and that of water and if you get the, those values then relative density will be w1 that is the weight of the substance in air divided by the up thrust and up thrust is always given by the weight in air minus the weight in water so that way you're able to get the relative density of a solid that sinks in water then we move to relative density of a solid which floats in water in this case we use a sinker and from the word the sinker is something that sinks in water therefore we use it as follows we get the weight of sinker in water w1 weight of the sinker in water plus the weight of floating object at this case you can use a cork or any other floating object you call it w2 then you have the weight of the sinker plus the weight of the floating object in water both of them now covered by water we get that as w3 as shown in our diagram we have the first one the weight of the sinker in water w1 this is the w1 then the weak the weight when the the floating object is outside the water as you can see we are calling it w2 and then finally when both of them are in water then after getting those readings you proceed as follows you get the weight of the floating object as w2 minus w1 remember w1 is the weight of the sinker in water then weight of the floating object in water you get w3 minus w1 then from there we get the up thrust of the floating object as follows we remember up thrust is always the weight in air minus the weight when the object is immersed in a fluid so the weight in air is w2 minus w1 which is this one then minus the weight of the floating object in air, in water which is w3 minus w1 from there we are supposed to open the brackets here and we have w2 it is our it's here then after that you, you you have minus w1 it's here then you subtract minus w3 we are opening this bracket minus w3 then minus times minus you get positive w1 so w1 because it is negative and this is positive they are going to cancel out so your equation reduces to w2 minus w1 w2 minus w3 that is because w1 has cancelled out this gives us the up thrust of the object that is floating in water therefore relative density is the weight of the solid over the up thrust we have that the relative density of the floating object will be the weight in air which is this one w2 minus w1 
divided by the up thrust which is w2 minus w3 so that way you are able to get the relative density of a floating object from there we move to another example or another point here to find the relative density of the liquid we determine the following the weight w1 of the solid in air the weight w2 of the same solid when totally immersed in water then part C, the weight W3 of the same solid when totally immersed in a liquid whose relative density is to be determined. Then after getting all that, we will proceed. Relative density is equal to mass of liquid divided by the mass of equal volume of water. So the weight of displaced liquid, remember we are using the same solid. So the, 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 the weight that is displaced in water will be the same weight as displaced in the the liquid that we are determining its relative density that is the mass so relative density will be weight of displaced liquid divided by the weight of equal volume of water displaced or we can as well say that relative density in liquids will be up thrust in liquids divided by up thrust in water remember the weight of displaced liquid will be the up thrust in liquid and the weight of equal volume of water displaced will be up thrust in water so that way you are able to get the relative density of the liquid therefore we can say relative density of the floating object not the floating object but now the liquid the relative density of the liquid will be our w1 that is the weight in air minus w3 that is the weight in liquid so that gives us the up thrust in liquid divided by w1 which is the, so the weight of w1 is the weight in air minus w2 that is the weight in water so that way this gives us the up thrust in liquid and this one is giving us the up thrust in water so we look at an example an object weighs 1.06 newton in air 0.84 newton when fully immersed in water and 0.82 newton when fully immersed in a liquid if the density of water is this one that is a thousand k kilogram per cubic meter determine the density of the liquid we proceed as follows first of all we get the up thrust in liquid and to get the up thrust in liquid we get the weight in air and the weight when it is totally immersed in that liquid so it will be 1.06 newton minus 0.82 newton you get the up thrust as 0.24 newton then we have the up thrust in water again we get the weight in in water in air minus the weight when it is totally immersed in water when you get that you get it is 0.22 newton from there now we move to our formula relative density is equal to up thrust in liquid over up thrust in water so we get our values up thrust in liquid is 0.24 divided by 0.22 you get 1.09 as the relative density but you remember the question is asking about the density of a liquid so after that we put our relative density here we want to get the density of the liquid so we use this formula that it will be density of liquid divided by the density of equal volume of water so 1.09 will be equals to rho which is the density of liquid divided by the density of water which is a thousand kilogram per cubic meter now making rho the subject of the formula we need to multiply through by 1000 as you do it on this side you do it on the other side so that way you are left with rho is equals to 1.09 times 1000 and that gives you 1090 kilogram per cubic meter as the density of the liquid then we proceed to another example a solid of mass 600 gram is suspended by a string and it is totally immersed in water if the tension in the string is 4.8 newton calculate the volume of solid relative density of the solid and then now we proceed as follows we have the mass as 600 grams so from the mass we can be able to get the weight so weight will be 6 newton how are we getting this 6 newton you divide this by a thousand to make it kg then you multiply by 10 because we know that weight is equals to mass times g so you get 6 newton therefore we can see that weight 1 which is the weight in air is 6 newton and weight 2 which is the weight when the object is totally immersed in water is 
4.8 newton. Now we can be able to get the upthrust, which is 6 minus 4.8 newton, you get 1.2 newton. Now the volume of water displaced will be given by the mass divided by the density. Remember we want to get the volume. So first of all we get the mass and we get the density. So we have our mass will be this one. This is the weight. From the weight we can get the mass because weight is mass times g. So to get the mass we always get the weight divided by g where g is our gravitational constant. Those things should be on your fingertips now. So it will be 0 0.12 kg divided by 1000. You get this as the value of the volume of water displaced. Then from there, you can convert it because the volume of the water displaced is the same as the volume of the solid. So we are getting it in cubic meter. Remember, we always work with SI units. From there, we get the relative density of the solid. And we start always with the formula. Relative density is equal to the weight of a solid divided by the upthrust in water. So we get the weight of the solid, which is 6 newton. You divide by the upthrust, which is 1.2 newton. You get that the relative density is 5. Note that it has no units because this newton and this newton will cancel out. It is a ratio. No units. From there, we move to another example. The wooden block below floats in two liquids, X and Y. If the densities of x and y are 1 gram per centimeter cubed and 0 .0, 0 0.8 gram per cubic meter respectively, determine the mass of the block, the density of the block. This is the diagram that you have here. You can be able to see that part, this part is x, that is the x liquid, and then we have y. And from here to here is 6 centimeter, that is the part that is covered by the x. And the part that is covered by y is 3 cm, then the part that is up is 3 cm. So you can as well know that from here to here it will be 12 cm. Then the cross section area will be 4 by 8, by 5 that is. Now we proceed as follows. We want to get the mass. So first of all we get the volume of y displaced, that is liquid y displaced. We get the cross section area 4 by 5. Then we multiply by the height that is covered by the y, the liquid y. When you multiply, it will be 60 cubic centimeters. We have to convert that into meters. We divide this by 1 million. Then from there, we know that upthrust is always given by V rho G, where V is the volume and rho is the density. So we substitute the values. You have the density, this one. It is converted to kilogram per cubic meter. You multiply by 1,000. Then our volume is in a cubic meter. Then we multiply by 10. When you put these values in your calculator, you find that it will be 0 0.48 Newton. That is the upthrust in Y. Volume of X displaced. We proceed as follows. We have now the, 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 the cross-sectional area. We have converted now the dimensions in meters. So we have 0 0.04, 0 0.05 multiplied by 0 0.06. You get the volume as this one. Now again, upthrust in X will be V rho G. Again, we substitute our values. We have the, 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 the density of X is 1 gram. You convert it in, into kilogram per cubic meter. You get 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Then you multiply by the volume and then G. You get 1.2. So we have the upthrust in Y and we have the upthrust in X. Now to get the total upthrust, we add 1.2 plus 0 0.48. You get 1.68. After getting the total upthrust, now the total upthrust will be equal to the weight of the block. So the weight of the block will be 1.68 Newton. Now to get the mass, weight, mass is equal to weight over G. So you get the weight, you divide by 10, you get 0 0.168 kg. That will be the mass of the block. Then we proceed to get the density. Density is mass over volume. We have our values here. Mass is 0 0.168 kg. Our volume will be, now we are getting the volume of the whole block. So it will be, the length will be this one, 6 plus 3 plus 3 to get 12. And you have to convert it into meters. So it is becoming 0 0.12. So when you key in all these values in your calculator, you find that your density will be 700 kilogram per cubic meter. Then from there, we have the assignment. 
This one is just testing what we have just covered. So make sure that you practice, teach the other so that you can be able to gain more and then finally come and attempt your assignment. So thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.